romance. We're talking romance, but here's the thing. It shouldn't just be in the movies you watch or the books you read. According to my next guest, it can be and should be a constant in your marriage too. Dr. Matt Townsend says every couple can revive the romance in their relationships, but it requires more than flowers, more than chocolates. Really what we're doing is redefining the word. And I think as you, you know, sink into um, a meaningful, substantial relationship, you start to feel this, but I love that you're putting words to it. Yeah, and it's, and you almost have to, right? Because when I ask you what romance means, it's so different to everyone. Mm -hmm. And when you see the marketers market it, mm -hmm. it's a dinner out mm -hmm. with your partner. But is the dinner romantic or is the lighting romantic? Or is the conversation romantic? Because if you're at the dinner and it's beautiful lighting and you're talking about your kid's bowel issue, <laughs> Then it ain't so romantic. <laughs> this is so funny too, because right? speaking of my kid, no bowel issue involved. Yeah. Boston just asked me out of the blue the other day, little oh. kindergartner with a strong pronounced lip <laughs> lisp, what is romance, mom? What Did is he really? Isn't that a cute that question? That is so cute. I was totally caught off guard. That's so cute. And so you told him it's vampires I and werewolves mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and those love stories. Totally. And women in a pirate shirt, puffy pirate Stop shirt, it. hanging down over the shoulder Stop. on every romance novel. Look at how we've kind of messed it up. So here's the definition Kay. of romance. He won't want to hear this, but it's evoking or given to thoughts and feelings of love, especially idolized or sentimental love. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's imbued with, character, uh, with characteristics of romance, right? So it's anything, but if you notice, it's thought and feeling. Romance tends to be thought and feeling. So it's conceptual, and then it's felt, but then it has to be acted out in some action. Mm -hmm. So, and then, so I bring you flowers, but if that doesn't, if that's not what you think is romantic, then part of the romance model has to be not just what I offer and how I offer it, but how you interpret what I offer. How, I, how you interpret what I'm feeling, uh, ultimately. Every, and everything's an interpretation and an offering. And so what we're really doing is we're negotiating romance 500 times a day. We're negotiating it. So if I leave your towel out for you when you're showering and that's romantic, um, but if you interpret it like, oh, geez, why can't he let me get my own towel? <laughs> and now we're fighting about a towel. So why this is important is that it's something you, that doesn't happen and it's not just something you do, it's something you both co-create. Mm. And it has to be thought of that way. Mm. Otherwise, there's too much pressure put on one person and not enough pressure put on both of us to be learning and growing. Sorry, I'm still fixated on that word negotiating. I yeah. think that's a fantastic way to look at it. You are negotiating romance yeah, you have all to. day. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's not, like it's not, I mean, it could be cute that, you're, that Mark kneels down and when he's running late, runs over, kneels down and diapers the baby. But he diapers the baby maybe because he, it would have been easier for him not to, but he just knew it, it would good, be good for you because you were running too. Yeah. So that could be seen as romantic, even though it is a moment of diapering. Yeah. Right? Yeah. They're out there. All the, they're and all those, over the place. And those moments yeah. are romantic. I can attest yeah. to that. Uh, here are four things that we can do to fuel the romance, no yeah. matter your age or stage. You say it does start with showing your partner, showing who you love, that they are truly known to you. They're truly known to you. So when you do any gesture that can be romantic, if you know it's what you, it shows you know them. So if I buy you a card, but I buy you a card that is known to something that's an intern, an inside joke, something that you uniquely love and want, mm -hmm. it's not just getting your nails done because you always get your nails done. Maybe I buy two of them so you can go take my daughter Sarah to get the nails with you because I know that's what you love. Mm -hmm. So it's when I start giving the gift that shows that I know you. Mm. And in order to show you know somebody, you actually have to know them, mm -hmm. which means you have to pay more attention. It's not flowers. I have the greatest example of a wife that hates flowers and the husband for 20 years gave her flowers. And so every time he'd give her the flowers, she would see that he doesn't know her. They've talked about it, and what he finally started to do is he then started getting wild flowers and planting them in their driveway that drives up to their house. So now she's got flowers that grow every mm. year, and every time she pulls up in that driveway, she sees that's where he changed, he came to know me, and now he's serving me. I'm not getting flowers in a vase, yeah. but I'm seeing the beauty and of that. And that's romance. That's romance. And now we're not ticking her off every Valentine's Day. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Flowers are kind of an interesting they topic are. for most of us. You either love them or you hate them. Yeah. Okay, next on your list, you've got to prioritize. You've got to make this person a priority. So to make somebody a priority, and in our language, we have lots of priorities. But actually, a priority means is a singular word. It's a priori, it's one priority. 
If you have a priority, there's only one. Interesting. We don't have 50 priorities. Yes. We use that language, but there's really only one. Yeah. So in your marriage, if you make your partner the priority, then all of a sudden you put them and you elevate them above everyone else, even yourself. And some people are like, oh, well, that's dangerous. Well, it's actually not if you're confident in yourself mm -hmm. and if you know yourself and if you're sure of yourself and you're not going to lose yourself, but you're not, you're going to put this person above. I had a, a husband, loves hunting. They have fought for years about hunting. It was all about fighting about hunting. They learned this idea of making the partner priority. So he decided he's not going hunting this year. And it was a true offering from his heart to make her a priority. Well, she on the side had bought a private hunting trip for him <laughs> and then was hooking up his friends to go. And little did they know when they finally gave their gifts at Christmas, they had both given the thing that the other needed or wanted to is. show priority. Yeah. And um, it was really amazing because her trip replaced his trip that he would have normally taken selfishly, mm -hmm. and it was the first time she's ever wanted him to go hunting. Mm -hmm. So when we make someone a priority and we know who they are, we're willing to kind of lose ourselves and elevate them, not to the loss, but actually to the, uh, the addition yes, of ourselves. Yes, you said that so well, and I, you think of the, what's the word I'm looking for? I guess the word is romance, but you think of the energy or the synergy, the momentum, the romance oh, that yeah. comes when both people are focused uh -huh. on that singular that priority. I sure. love that. I will sure. never think of that word the same again. Um, that's magic. That's and, love. And what if you put your phone down? That's yeah. priority. And what if when they say something, you actually turn yeah. and you listen? That's yeah. priority. You want us to communicate that they are desired, wanted, and needed, like verbalize yep. it? Every human being needs to know they're desired, uh -huh. physically, socially, emotionally, spiritually. They need to know they're needed and they need to know they're wanted. And we live in a society where we sometimes hold up independence as the highest form of humanity. Once you're independent, then you're free. But the reality is, is interdependent is the highest form of reality. Mm -hmm. Once you've reached a level of independence that now I need to now be willing to need you mm -hmm. and be willing to allow you to do, even though I know I could do it, mm -hmm. I need to allow you to do it mm -hmm. so that I kind of lose that part of me, be a little more vulnerable to allow you to serve me that way. Um, I have a lot of partners where the husband really wants to be wanted. Why don't you ever initiate intimacy? Mm -hmm. Why don't you ever do this? Why don't you? And all those are complaints about wanting to be wanted. And, um, and it's so hard for the other partner to be vulnerable enough to show that they do need you. Mm -hmm. So if, if you really want to create power in a relationship, communicate to the other that they are not just physically, by the way, that's, let's not just beat that dead horse, but that you're wanted, like, I don't know how I could handle these kids without you, honey. Mm. You're amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know how I could handle life without you. And if we can communicate that early in our relationships mm -hmm. so that our partners actually know that they are invaluable and can't be replaced, goldmine. Well said. That's amazing, Matt. That really is. Uh, a minute left. Uh, consistency, you say, is romantic. Constant, right? All of us need a constant. And in this world where everything's changing, to have an anchor that we can anchor to is what really grows the loves, right? So we want you to be a constant person for them in the love, a constant person in the family that's bringing the love to the family. Nothing creates more love than weirdly predictable um, and trustworthy and consistent. Mm -hmm. That is the most safe thing we've got. And so one thing you could do now to be more romantic is be there, show up, be there, be there when they need you. When you're there, put your phone down, make them a priority and be there, show up, be there, show up be there. So then in the end, when they go and life's over and everything's done, what they miss is your constancy, your, your strength. That's romance. Isn't that cool? You just made me cry. That Don't was really cry. sweet. Yeah. Be there. That's it. Be there. Thank you so much. Thank All right. So that. here's the um, problem with something so wonderfully successful as a date night. Yes. Is people want more <laughs> Matt. And Matt's ready for a year-long vacation after date Woo! night. We won't let him, we no. won't let him rest. You have a new program coming and out. And weirdly, it's coming from the date night. So the date night was a two-hour relationship makeover. We now have a 10-day relationship makeover. And there's the QR code. If you go to that code, we're giving all of the viewers a discount, early bird kind of discount for this. It's 10 days. I send you a video a day. You take an assessment, how cool. a 50 point assessment, and I show you how to get out of the spiral that most of us fall into yeah. in those 10 days. Super powerful. And then it's going to be launching a big online coaching program that we'll be announcing in the next few weeks. This is huge. Oh. If you didn't grab that QR code, we'll post it on our website too, but you want to see these 10 videos and get be a part of this new program. Proud of you. You're doing Thanks, good. Thank you so awesome. much.